Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good. My name is Vishal and welcome to the YouTube channel. In this video, we will be talking about the Snowflake architecture. This is my second video of Snowflake uh, Zero to Hero series. If you haven't subscribed this channel so far, then please do it. I'm sure by end of this series, you will be having a great confidence in the Snowflake. And you will not only just interview ready, but you will be the job ready. Before learning any new technologies, what I believe, like you and me and everyone should take a deep dive of the architecture. Because it is very crucial, it is very crucial to understand the architecture and knowing how it functions. Architecture of any technologies provide a framework for understanding how different components interact. This is going to give you a bigger picture that how each piece fit together. Understanding how the architecture work enable you to leverage features and capabilities effectively and maximize the tool's potential. If I would be having a good understanding of the architecture and if my team is saying that, hey, I'm getting some kind of a problem or if I'm, uh, we got basically some issue, I can basically pinpoint that way the problem may be occurring and I can quickly diagnose it and resolve it. So in summary, delving into the architecture of a tool, not only going to enhance your immediate understanding, but also going to equip you with the knowledge that will benefit you in the future project and the technologies. Okay, as you can see in the diagram or you can see over the screen, the snowflake architecture where these are the, uh, there are the three main layer. But before understanding or before getting a deep dive of these three layers, let's understand one or two uh, line the Snowflake is basically a combination of both shared disk and shared nothing system. Like shared disk, it is it has a central data repository where all of your data will get stored and that all compute node can access. On the other hand, it also uses shared nothing principle by processing queries with MPP, which means massively parallel processing. So each node hold part of the data locally that this design simplifies data management while providing the performance and scalability benefit of shared nothing. Okay, so in simple word, we can say the Snowflake architecture is basically a hybrid architecture which is combination of shared disk and shared nothing. Now come to this uh, diagram. We can, we can clearly see that Snowflake architecture is comprised of three main layers. The first one is the cloud service layer, which is also known as the brain layer. The second one, we have a virtual warehouse layer that we can say compute layer. And the last one, we have a data storage layer where all our data will get stored. Now, what are the three, what are the main responsibility of each layer? So far, because we haven't created a Snowflake account, so I won't be directly showing over there. But in our next videos, we'll de I'll definitely take you to, uh, to the Snowflake uh, account and then I'll show you which layer is coming in the picture. So, so far, like in second or third video and probably in couple of next video, we will be talking about the uh, theory parts. So bear with that. But after this, everything will be on, uh, on live and the practically and that will give you a good confidence. So let's discuss about the cloud service layer. As I mentioned, this is going to be the brain layer. And we can see the responsibility of the cloud service layer. The first one is the authentication and access control, or I can say authentication and authorization. Now, let me give you one simple example. If I'm going to join a new company today, I'm going to just wake up this morning. I'm going to dress up beautifully. I uh, booked the Ola and reached over there. As soon as I'll try to enter into the premises of that new company, the guard will immediately stop. Guard is going to immediately stop me because I don't have an ID card. So either he will be asking, sir, do you have the ID card? Or if not, then please do let me know why you are visiting this. Just tell me the purpose to visit. In this case, I'm just going to say, hey, this is going to be my very, very, very first, uh, first day and I have a joining, something, blah, blah, blah. The security guard is going to check it, uh, like whether he got any intimation from this HR or any admin team that, yeah, this guy is going to join the office or not. So that is basically authentication. 
now he is going to check so in the sim in in terms of the cloud so in terms of snowflake whenever i'm going to provide my user id and credentials like whenever i'm going to provide my username and password the cloud service layer is going to validate whether i am putting my username and password correct or not if any of the mis and any of the uh, like a name or password is incorrect cloud service layer will immediately stop me outside of the premises now once my password is good uh, password and username is validated i'll come into the snowflake premises i'll come to the snowflake ui but now what account admin or the admin like let's go back to the the same uh, the previous example admin of that company has not given me any right that means he hasn't given me any access card so far so i'm just standing or i'm sitting at the reception area now the receptionist just called me hey vishal just come here and this is going to be your temporary id card and take it and go to the reception or go to the induction room so they are giving me just authority to go to the induction room only and that's how the access control work so account admin in my snowflake will provide me the access of some databases some warehouses some tables and those would be the different different type of access depending on my roles depending on my responsibility so if i'm going to try select star from customer or uh, mm, like uh, if i'm going to try to enter into a different room into that premises my security my my access card will not allow me to go inside any other meeting room so similar thing happen into the snowflake if i'm going to write select star from customer of any database which i don't have authority or i don't have the access cloud service layer is going to give me an error either the object doesn't exist or you don't have authority to access the stable so the first and the major responsibility of the cloud service layer is authentication and access next it manages the infrastructure it manages the metadata so whenever we are going to store the data all the metadata like a table name table count the micropartition count the main max everything is managed by the cloud service layer other than this data sharing security query optimization infrastructure management so all these things will be managed by the cloud service layer so let's see this into the details okay so it also include the management function for handling infrastructure metadata as well as performing query parsing and optimization among other feature and that is why we call it as a brain layer okay so cloud service layer manages data security for data sharing and uh, everything like okay you can just consider whatever uh, an uh, admin guy will be doing or uh, a ceo of any company would be like giving you the access and all just consider this cloud service layer is going to perform all these things next thing is in my uh, architecture i can see there is a virtual warehouse so do not get confused with the term virtual warehouse if i am going to say it like i definitely will be saying it hundreds of time in my entire this uh, snowflake series virtual warehouse so this virtual warehouse is basically a compute machine do not get confused with the data warehouse data warehouse is a place where we store the data virtual warehouse which is going to help you to load the data query the data it's basically a compute machine okay now in the snowflake we have this compute machine this virtual warehouse we can have multiple warehouse from the different different sizes what does it mean the big the smallest size we have is extra small and the largest we have 6xl so in snowflake i can create my warehouse extra small to 6xl depending on my load i will be creating a separate video on this virtual warehouse so let's focus only few things which you need to know at this stage now any one of you might, may have this query that vishal if i am having the snowflake hosted on aws then is it snowflake who is going to responsible for creating this virtual warehouse or i have to do and i need to go to the some like a aws or to the cloud provider 
no this is all the responsibility or all activities will be taken care by the snowflake but yes if you have hosted your snowflake on aws then it is going to be your ec2 machine but can we check the dc2 machine what are the un, uh, under the hood configuration and all no we cannot uh, check it because this has not been disclosed by the snowflake if we have hosted a snowflake on azure then it is going to be azure vm or google vm depend uh, like in uh, the google cloud so we can have a multiple warehouses and one of the good feature is that every warehouse is independent of each other so we can say we can scale independently each other without impacting the other or the adjacent virtual warehouse in the snowflake okay now if i have some data into my snowflake storage layer and i need to retrieve it i need to analyze it for that i would be requiring a compute machine and that compute machine will be provided by this compute layer that called as virtual warehouse and trust me it is very easy to create a virtual warehouse here this is definitely going to be just a child job but understanding how we are going to create what are the parameters value we need to set it what would be the ideal size of the warehouse that is very very important some of you will not be able get will not be able uh, like uh, get a chance to create a warehouse in next couple of years but those who are going to have eight or ten plus years of experience you might be working as a sysadmin or security admin in your new role there you have to take care of it because ultimately if you have and choose a right size of the warehouse then it is going to give you a problem not, not only just into the performance but at the cost also so we have to uh, maintain a perfect balance between the cost and performance and I, as i mentioned i will be creating a story a separate video on this virtual warehouse okay so snowflake unique architecture which allows us the separation of stories and compute that means any virtual warehouse can access the same data as another without impacting on performance of other warehouses okay got it i'm sure you would and if you would be having any queries feel free to drop your queries into the comment box or i will be dropping my email address into the description there you can reach out to me next thing is the data storage layer as it uh, by the names uh, you will be getting it that this is the layer where my entire data will be getting stored but under the hood where exactly the data will be stored so as i mentioned that in case of aws if my compute layer was ec2 so again my storage will also be on the aws data lake which is s3 but one important thing if anyone asks can i see that no can i access that no you can only and only access by running sql queries on snowflake it is not visible to any customer okay and also if you think that i do have an aws account can i host the snowflake on the same account no snowflake under the hood will be creating its own workspace and you will not be knowing it where it is created okay so data storage layer where my entire data will get stored and i would not only be like able to ingest the structured data but also can structure semi can also can store the semi structured data like csv json xml parquet orc okay in this and my data will be stored into the compressed format and it is optimally going to be organized into the small small chunks that call as a micro partitions snowflake take care of it every uh, by own so here if i'm going to store 1 gb of file that will automatically be converted in small small chunks or portions that will be known as micro partitions micro partition size is 50 to 500 mb and those are immutable that means if one micro partition has been created now if you try to update one values 
one value or one column value of that micro partition, it is going to create a separate partition. Okay, so again, this micro partitions we will be understanding in the detail in the later sections. Okay, so consider about the data storage layer. This it is going to be centralized hybrid columnar format. Data will be optimally reorganized. Data will be stored into the columnar format and it will be compressed. So one GB of file may become 500 MB, 700 MB or 600 MB depending on the snowflake mood. Sorry, not the snowflake mood, depending on how your data is. Okay. So the snowflake can also handle structure as well as the semi-structure data. Here, your data is going to be encrypted using AES-256 encryption and that will totally and totally handled by the snowflake. Your data is going to be on AWS S3, which me, you, Katrina Kaif, Salman Khan, George Bush, no one can see that. Only the snowflake, only you can qu uh, query that data by writing the SQL on the snowflake. Okay, now one of the two main feature of the data storage layer is time travel and the zero copy clone. Again, we will be discussing these two topics into the later section. Okay, so if I give you a small concise way of the snowflake architecture, so we can say the snowflake is basically combination of shared disk and shared nothing architecture. It separate the stories and compute activity, which result we can scale up them independently without impacting the other warehouses performance. It is a multi-cluster shared data architecture and that is elastic in nature. Now, if you will quickly recap whatever we have learned about these three layers, you see the storage layer, it's going to be an underlying cloud storage like a S3, GCP or Azure blob. The processing is going to be on EC2, Azure VM or GCP VM and cloud service layer, which is basically main or brain layer, but this will also be on the same cloud. Okay, storage. One of the good thing is you can store infinite data structure or semi-structure of both type. You will not be running out of storage. Okay. Then the stored data will always be compressed and encrypted. You just at this stage, you just go uh, go through with this line that, okay, that storage bill will be $23 per terabyte, but we will be understanding that into the new video, like where I will be talking about the snowflake pricing in the details. Next thing, let's store data into the hybrid column format. Similarly, you can see that the processing, processing layer, which is a query execution, it's going to be give you a virtual warehouse, it's also known as virtual warehouse uh, warehouse layer. Each warehouse has no impact on the other performance and the compute bill will be generated depending on the warehouse size. Basically here we have a unit called credits. So Snowflake generates some credit. If I am running my warehouses for one hour, it will be generate some credit but depend on the warehouse size. If it is extra small, it will run, uh, it will generate one credit. If it is two XL, three XL, like if it is small, then it will be two. Similarly for medium, it is going to four, large eight. For XL, it is going to be 16 credit for one hour. So that is why it is very important to understand what is going to be the ideal size for this requirement for this load, because it is, going to be very very problematic for you and you will be ending up paying a dollars of bills understand okay sounds good i hope you have got a good understanding of the snowflake architecture but if you still have some queries or some questions you are free to drop your queries into the comment box and you can even reach out to me on my email address which i will be giving in this description now, in the next video, we will be talking about the Snowflake pricing and we will be setting up our Snowflake account. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't.